On this episode of The Build Show, let's talk about foundations. The foundation is the most critical component of any structure, and as you can see behind me, we're well underway with the foundation system here on a new custom home we're building, literally a couple hundred feet from the Atlantic Ocean. The water's edge is just over that berm. Now, that being said, this is not a standard foundation. It's not an eight foot wall with a full basement or even a slab on grade um, application. This house is being built on 35 concrete piers um, and the first floor elevation of this house is going to be about 22 and a half feet above sea level. Now the reason for that is that if we have a hurricane and we have some storm surge, that that water could pass underneath the house safely. Now the house won't look like it's being built on a series of piers or stilts. Um, they'll have breakaway walls between the piers. Um, we'll talk about breakaway walls in a uh, future episode. Um, but essentially the house will look like it's a three, three and a half story house because of the breakaway walls will look like it's part of the house. And any exposed piers on the outside, which is only three, and all the posts for the deck and so forth, will be wrapped in cedar shake with weaved corners so it'll have a really nice uh, New England shingle style look to the house. So before I get into what you're looking at here behind me, let me back up a little bit and talk about what has happened to get to this point. Right here on this footprint, there was a house. We have demolished that house. We did an episode here on our channel um, talking about the demolition process and building within a couple hundred feet of the ocean um, so if you've seen the episode, great. We appreciate you watching it. If you have not, go check it out. Um, it'll get you caught up to what has happened here on the site. Um, but now that we're here and we've got these grade beams in place, before we did the grade beam work, we installed helical piles at each location where there's a concrete pier. So as I mentioned, there's 35 concrete piers, there's 35 helical piles. What's a helical pile? It's essentially a steel pipe, galvanized steel pipe, that has a bottom to it that looks like a screw. It's got those helices on it. And it's driven into the ground to a required torque that's specified by the engineer. Now, we've achieved that required torque, and in most situations here with these piles, they also bear on ledge. We've got ledge about 11 feet below the ground here. Um, so the piles, most of them anyway, sit on ledge. So it's really a perfect case scenario. So why are we installing the helical piles? This seems like a robust footing. These gray beams are 24 inches tall, 30 inches wide, with these big beefy concrete piers coming off of them that are supporting the house. Um, yes, a beefy system indeed, but we're building this house for several hundred years, not 20 or 30 years. Now with rising sea level, increase in hurricanes here on the east coast, if we do have storm surge and that water comes rushing in here and around those concrete columns, there's something called scour. Scour is, imagine like a, uh, like a beach pier and those wooden um, posts on the pier. When water rushes around a post like that, the velocity increases. And as the water's coming around the post, the soil at the base of it can lift up. It can get um, agitated and the soils can actually be picked up and removed, essentially leaving a depression, a hole in the soil around the base of that um, post. Now, if that were to happen here with these concrete piers without the helical piles, then that scour could compromise the structural integrity of the foundation. So as a belt and suspenders approach, essentially, um, we've installed those helical piles at every uh, concrete pier location. So, helical piles went in. We got all of the epoxy coated rebar um, in place for the grade beams. That green epoxy coated rebar that you can see behind me here, that is a corrosion resistant rebar. Um, not required by code here, um, but again, best practice, belt and suspenders approach. Concrete does crack, even the smallest hairline crack that lets in water can corrode uh, rebar. And if it's not protected with the epoxy, it can fail over time. So 
being so close to the ocean, potentially having storm surge, and just the salt that's in the air um, in our area um, is enough to concern me that we want to provide the best materials here for the project. So that's why we're using the epoxy coated rebar. So we've got all the reinforcement done. We formed up the grade beams. We placed 120 yards of concrete yesterday. The guys just left. They stripped most of the forms off of these grade beams. Uh, once they get cleared, cleaned up and cleared out of here uh, for a few days, we'll bring in our excavation team. We're going to backfill um, the whole site, leaving it down about one inch from the top of the grade beam. The reason we're doing that is just to provide a nice, flat, clean, and safe surface for the concrete team to work on. Those guys are going to be building 35 steel cages stubbed up from where these epoxy coated bars come out of the grade beams now, and those are going up about 13 feet. So we want to make sure that those guys are safe when they're building those cages. So we'll backfill, we'll bring the concrete team back in, they will form up the concrete piers. We'll place concrete in those 35 piers, probably a two-phase pour. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then we'll strip the forms. And then we're actually building a frost wall between the concrete piers, only on the perimeter of this footprint. Um, and that is just for uh, lateral uh, stability, if you will, of the columns. There's going to be um, soil in here, compacted gravel within the footprint and then obviously on the outside of that wall. So the wall will be uh, have equal pressure on it with soil on each side. Everything within the footprint will be compacted. We'll haul in gravel that's compactable gravel. Uh, we wanna hit a high compaction rate. And then later we'll be pouring a slab over this. And then that will essentially be that ground level floor of the house, if you will. So when you pull in the garage, you'll pull onto that slab. Um, when you look in the window on those breakaway walls, you'll be looking in at the slab. That's the unfinished space, um, but it will all be a uh, concrete slab on grade. So a very unique, complex uh, process here for building um, here within a FEMA flood zone. We'll be taking you guys through each phase, so make sure you stay tuned into our channel for some future episodes here on this build as well as others. We appreciate you watching as always. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, WKP underscore construction, and we'll see you soon here on The Build Show.